I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today I am joined by John Miano, who is a volunteer here on the Battleship and who has just published the book on Iowa-class battleship armor. And in today's video, we're gonna go through some of the quirks of the armor in the turrets for Iowa-class battleships. See, one of the, one of the quirks of the um, armor in the Iowa-class in several places is that the armor is mounted to backing plates rather than directly in place. So where my hand is, is a one-inch backing plate. This is at the side of turret two, two's armor, and the and the nine and a half inch armor plate is actually behind where I'm behind where my hand is. And if you come to my left over here, you see this little cap. This is covering the bolts that attach the armor to the backing plate. And so the, the backing plate, this, this um, little cap here, would protect the um, crew in case um, the armor was struck and the bolt was sheared. This keeps it from going flying, flying all over. Also around the, what, behind the backing plate, between the backing plate and the actual armor, there's about an inch of cement. The Navy filled the gap between the um, backing plate and the armor with cement to even out any irregularities that there might have been with the armor. And then if the armor had been struck by some projectile, this, the, project, the cement would spread the force of the impact across the full width of the armor rather than just these bolts that attach the armor um, to the backing plate. Okay, so that's like ceramic armor nowadays, yeah. where it's spreading it out and then allowing itself to be pulverized, essentially. Quite a Another little thing you'll see there. And few the, these bolts don't go all the way through the armor, right? You drill into the armor and tap it, and then the bolt screws in, so there's no head on the outside. Right, they go into the, ar go into the armor. And one of the things, you, there are several openings in the side um, for the periscopes. So here, this, for the, this is the opening for the range finder. Forward, there are openings for uh, two periscopes on the side. And so there's a dam, or what they call a collar, that extends from the backing plate to the actual armor plate that keeps the cement from coming out of the arm coming out of the armor. Another little interesting feature we see here is that all over the Iowa class battleships, they used these uh, scalloped plates to weld armor plates together. And so the uh, in this case we have a scalloped angle which is between the backing plate and the roof armor plate, this is seven and a quarter, quarter inches, and what they would do is put the, they would scallop out this angle and then they would weld along the scallops, and the scallops give greater welding surface than if they just kept it, kept it flush. And this is kind of a relic of the days of riveting. They didn't really trust uh, welding very much, so they used these plates I, I just love how you can see it's built up. Talk yeah. about going over the top. It's not just, well, we used one bead here yeah. to build this up. It, you build it up with one bead, then you put two over that, and it looks like six beads yeah. at, the, at the top. Yeah, kind of o overkill. And as we can see here that the armor plates in the roof, there are five, five of them, and the the armor, roof armor plates have a, scallop, have a scarf joint cut into them. So this is like Norm Abram working with wood. The Navy worked with metal. So somebody had to machine a giant joint about almost two feet wide through the, through the metal. So that's not part of the armor as it is cast. That is the, the cast that they sent into the shipyard and then the shipyard has to cut it out into shape? Right. So they've cut, so the army, so the Navy's in, then once they've actually got it delivered, they've cut, they've cut these um, scarf joints into the armor, and then they've run bolts through the, uh, through the overlap in the scarf joint to hold the plates together. And you can see the, the openings here of the bolt holes. On um, Missouri and Iowa, uh, these are covered with a plate. Presumably they thought that, that something might shoot through um, if it was struck like with these bolts, uh, but they didn't, uh, but as you can see, nothing would really be able to come through. So on New Jersey and Wisconsin, they left out a little plate over here. So another difference between the New York built ships and the Philadelphia built ships. Absolutely, here. 
So now we've repositioned to the back face of turret number two, right above the entrance, so more or less center line on the gun turret. Yeah, and if you look here, we have the roof plate. There, there are five of these roof plates um, in the, that make up the turret roof. And here's a little artifact from World War II. You can see there's a hole cut in the roof plate with wires running out that that used to be used to power the 40 millimeter gun that was sitting on turret two, and the same thing exists on turret, turret three. You can also see, again, the scallop uh, angle bracket that's going against the armor plate. The rear of the turret here is 11 inches of class A armor. And class A armor um, generally could not be welded uh, because it was face hardened and the welding could crack the face. But here, the armor is thick enough they could weld the inside of the armor and um, not worry about cracking the face. So there is no backing plate on the rear as there are at the sides and front of the turret. Um, and it just goes directly to the angle. And this um, actually um, dispels a myth um, that sometimes per, um, put out in some naval books that Class A armor could not be used structurally. And here is, is a clear example of where Class A armor is used structurally. It forms the entire uh, back of the turret. How many spaces off the top of your head would you say do use Class A structurally? I know in the past we've talked about yeah. around the steering gear yeah. and the uh, backs of the turrets. Can you think of any other examples on the ship? Yeah, so it would be the backs of the turrets, the steering gear, um, and, the and the transverse armor at the um, front um, at frame right. 50 and um, frame 166 and with, at the steering gear as well. Now we're on the outside of turret 2, on the port side of the 01 level, near the back face of the turret. And uh, we were planning on climbing up on top of the turret and talking about those uh, roof plates. However, given the weather, I'm not sure if you guys can see this on the camera, but it's raining pretty hard here today, or right now at least. Uh, so we're using the rangefinder for an awning. I mean, yeah, so here we can see several of, actually in this view you can see three of the four types of armor that are used on the Iowa class. You know, immediately above us is the uh, rangefinder hood. Uh, that's in it. There are also two, two hoods forward um, on each side that are used for the pointer and trainer hoods. And these are cast armor. Um, they're three and a half inches thick. Uh, just uh, armor is, that the molten metal is poured into the mold to form the edge. Uh, you kind of get, get a rough surface because the molds are generally made out, of, made out of sand. Behind us, we have the side plates of the armor, which is we just, to the other side. Again, from the inside, the side plate is covered with a backing plate so you can't see it. The side plate is uh, made out of Class A armor. And Class A armor is heat treated, so it's um, harder on the outside than it is on the inside. And one of the r results of the heat treatment is it gets a kind of pocked, pockmarked face. You see around the edge, as you can see, divots in the, um, in the armor which you don't see in Class B armor, which is homogenous armor. Uh, class A is designed to stop what sorts of hits primarily? What, what's it better at? Class A is generally, it, uh, is generally better about stopping armor that it hits directly. Is there something coming straight right on it. like this yeah. as opposed to at a, at a plunging or an angle? Right, because the harder area is brittle, so if, you hit it, if this were to be hit along the edge like this and the shell scooted along the side, it could, in theory, just crack. It shatters the whole length of the plate. And crack. But if the, sh if the shell, in theory, if the shell hits the hard armor plate, the shell would, um, sh could shatter as it hit the armor out, out there. So another, um, another bit uh, is actually underneath here where we can, we, can, we can barely see. And this is called the shelf plate. It's basically, it's covered up by the armor here, but the shelf plate is it's actually two plates of two inch armor and it's called special treatment steel. And this is just a general armor plate that the, uh, that the shipbuilders used uh, just for any place they wanted additional reinfor reinforcement here. Uh, the special treatment steel or STS is a form of class B armor 
uh, but the Navy had as, had, its, had a different formulation of Class B armor. It was slightly different. Didn't really have any any great difference, but came from the um, Bureau of Ordnance, and the STS would be just what they would put together at the mill, and they would call that Class B. So in the plans, the plans of the ship, they differentiate between STS and, and Class B, when, but there's not really much of a different difference here. Now is, is there generally a difference in the thickness between the two? Generally in the ST, generally in the STS, the plates are like one to two inches, but on the belt, the, uh, the um, lower belt on New Jersey and Iowa is STS, 11.1 inches. So generally it's thinner, but there are some places where there's exception. Another thing we can see here is the barbette. Now the purpose of the barbette is to protect the turret above the main deck armor. The, the actual, there's a rotating turret, which is this, this part here, which would also be called the gun house. This part's the gun house, but there's more rotating turret below. But outside the rotating turret is the fixed turret. And the turret here rotates on bearings on the fixed turret, which you can't see. It looks like, to the casual observer, that the turret is resting on the barbette. It does not rest upon the barbette at all. The only connection between the turret and the barbette is there's a gas seal. Just, that's a, it's a, just to keep water and gas from protruding. It's not a structural um, reinforcement. In this barbette, you can see it is also class A armor because you can tell by all the pits in it. Because the armor could not be welded on the outside, what is, here's a segment of the, where the, where the barbette is in different seg, barbette's in different segments, and it's on the, in, it's joined on the inside by hammering a butterfly-shaped key down the middle to form a mechanical connection. It's also welded on the inside, but on the outside here, there's no connection what's, whatsoever. So that has been a deep dive into the various types of armor used on Iowa-class battleships and the armor that protects the gun house with John Miano, the author of the book Armor of the Iowa-class Battleships. That is less than a chapter out of your book that we've talked about today, isn't it? Yes, there's 400 pages on armor, everything you possibly would want to know. Including the uh, various blueprints that you've either found or recreated and pictures from mostly inside New Jersey. Yes, we, I think there's every single um, armor plate is, is measured and draw, diagrammed in the book someplace. So if you've ever wanted to build an Iowa-class battleship in your backyard, this is the book you need. There's a link to where you can get them in the description down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our continuing restoration efforts. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.